The Lolo Body Bar by Barmaids is an addictive and oh-so-decadent head-to-toe moisturizer made with all-natural skin-loving butters and oils. This amazing bar is most definitely one item that belongs in every fiber artist's stash. Working with yarns and fibers can be so rewarding even while it steals your moisture and leaves you raw. Lolo by Barmaids is luxurious, creamy, smooth, and so good for your skin. It's easy to use and there's never any leftover residue that could destroy your latest masterpiece. Protect and soothe your capable, beautiful, creative hands. Trust me, just try the Lolo Bar. The results speak for themselves. Hi and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is Saturday, February 18th and this is episode number 43. Yep, 43. <laughs> I do that every week. Anyway, welcome to the show. My name is Tina, and thanks for taking time out of your day to uh, stop by and watch. This week was not a busy week for a change. However, the coming week, and Sammy, the coming week is probably going to be rather busy. Um, as I mentioned last week, my boss is on vacation again, which is nice because I can get more knitting done because I'm not busy at work and I can knit. Now Sammy's over here trying to catch something in the chair that's not there. <laughs> so yeah, I got, I got quite a bit of knitting done. Not as much as I would have liked because when I came home, all I wanted to do was spin. But that's a good thing too because I like, I want to get spinning done as well as knitting. So, you know, if you're doing what you love, who cares whether it's knitting or spinning or whatever. So, this week it's going to be busy because we are getting our insulation installed in the attic on Friday. Um, I talked about this before when we were interviewing companies to um, to do our insulation. We're getting uh, what's called a hot roof where they spray foam insulation on the underside of the roof deck basically encompassing the attic into the, the general house area. How you would normally have insulation on your your attic floor this encompasses the whole attic because we have a bungalow and our upstairs bedroom has knee walls and angles and what have you and there's really no insulation at the top. So in order to properly insulate the house, this is kind of our only option that will be acceptable. So that's going to happen on Friday. but. In addition to that, they're also doing some insulation in the basement area in what they call the rim joists or the rim beads or something like that. It's up at the like at the foundation level. So because there's air coming in there as well. So needless to say, everything in the attic has to be moved out. Everything the whole rim of the basement has to be moved away from the wall, including my cabinets and all of, all of the stuff that's in upper shelves in my crafting area, which is not going to be fun. But it has to get done, and once it's done, it'll be awesome. So hopefully our electric bill or our gas bill will go down quite a bit. So that's going to be what we're going to be working on this week, starting today. And not only that, I have to organize the spare room because I've been storing all of the uh, prizes and everything for Knittopia in the spare room. And basically, as things have come in, I've just kind of put them in there and not done anything with them. And the cats have to be secured while the guys are here doing the insulation. And that's where they're going. 
So I need to organize all that stuff and actually put it into bins and get it organized so that the cats can be in there and not destroy anything. Because if you saw on Plurk earlier this week, Crystal got locked in the computer room earlier this week and she ripped up a cardboard box. So I can't imagine what she's going to do when she's locked in the spare bedroom all day for like eight hours. The other cats will be in there with her and she will have food and litter box in there. But still, <laughs> she gets a little anxious. <laughs> so that's what my week's going to consist of. And I'm hoping that it doesn't eat too much into my knitting time. But we'll see how it goes. Which also means that next week's podcast might be a little bit delayed because they're doing the insulation on Friday. I'm hoping that we can start moving things back as soon as they're done. But I don't know exactly how much of these cabinets we're going to have to empty if we're going to have to empty them or if we can just slide them away from the wall or what exactly. So... Next week's show might be delayed depending on trying to get reorganized. Anyway. So, that's that. Oh, and in, in the process of me trying to organize my room, my little scrapbooking, crafting area in the basement, I'm finding that I have every square inch of space used up in that, in that area. There's not one space that I can put anything away. I went to go put some books away, that some books that I recently purchased away, some knitting books. There's no room. No room at all. Which brings me to the fact that I am definitely going digital with everything. I've even started purchasing some knitting books on Kindle, with the anticipation of getting the iPad 3 in the coming months because really I just don't have space for books and I had pre-ordered the principles of knitting book last June or a while ago and between then and now I closed the bank account that I used to pay for the order and they don't charge you until it gets ready to ship. So earlier this week I got a notice saying uh, we can't charge your credit card because it's no longer there. So when I went to go and correct the information and put a different credit card number in, I decided to get the um, digital copy instead because that book is like I want to say like two or three inches thick. I've seen it um, shown on a couple of podcasts already. And it's huge. And it's just, first of all, it's not something that I would want to carry around with me. And because I like to take my books with me, I wouldn't want to tote that back and forth. Like if I'm taking a book with me to work, I don't want to tote that back and forth with me to work. So... I got a digital copy, and once I get the uh, iPad, I'll be able to read it pretty easily. You know, it'll be bigger, bigger screen and what have you. But I did get a couple of samples on the iPhone, and they do read a little bit better than on the Kindle because the iPhone has the different colors. And, like, I, I read some of it on a Kindle, and I couldn't figure out why it kept jumping around, I thought, well, maybe these samples don't have um, all the information in it, like, because I know that usually they have, like, the first chapter or so, but when I went to look at it on the iPhone, you could see that this section was grayed out, like, this was a, a specialty section, and then it jumped to um, the continuing of the article or whatever it was. So I think it'll be a lot easier to read something like that on the iPad or the iPhone versus the Kindle. But, yeah. So I'm going digital. In fact, I'm even considering going through my books and scanning the patterns that I think I will use and putting them into PDF and then uploading them to my iPad once I get it because that'll be so much easier. And speaking of iPad, I was notified earlier this week, actually I think it was last week, 
about the Knit Companion that is on iPad and is now for the iPhone. I did download the trial version and uh, it looks pretty interesting. I didn't do too much with it, but it does look very interesting uh, for patterns and keeping track of where you are. You can highlight the row that you're on and it looks very cool. However, it definitely will be better for the iPad. But I went to go and order the full version, but nowhere did I see the price of the full version. And I mean, even if it's like $20, I would probably still buy it, but I don't want to get sticker shock. I mean, if it's $5.99 or whatever, great. But I don't want to get sticker shock and come to find out that it's like $30 or $40 or something. I've never seen a, an app that expensive, but I just don't like to buy something if I don't know the price. So if anybody knows the, the full price of the, of the full version of uh, the Knit Companion, can you let me know? Because I'd like to order it, but... I'm just leery. I don't want to get surprised. So, but I have been playing with that a little bit on the phone. It's not too easy to use on the little screen of the phone, but it's something. Also, I've been watching my podcast on my blog this week because if you if you watch podcast on the blog, I have all of the podcasts that I watch on the side. I think it's on this side. Um and the, it updates. I have it set so that it will update when there is an when they've updated their their blog entry. So it's kind of cool. I could just go and see what's been updated and watch the shows that way, which seems to be working out well for me. So I might continue to do that if especially at work when I can just watch it on my work computer versus having to put in my iTunes library, which I keep on an external drive. And um, we heard about my iTunes issue last week, and now I'm leery about watching podcasts on my iTunes. But the blog works out very well. Okay. I'm going to talk about barmaids first this episode, because the last few episodes I've been saving it to the end. And I kind of feel like I'm kind of rushing through it because I'm trying to keep the podcast under an hour, which has not happened. So uh, this week, again, we have another Lolo bar up for grabs as a prize on the thread. I've already posted that in the group. In fact, um, just before I sat down to record, a couple of people have already posted to it. But I do want to um, reiterate that I have not been paid for this sponsorship. The sponsorship is strictly donations so that you guys can try out the product. So everything I've been telling you is coming from my heart, and I love the product. I did this week. Last week I mentioned that I placed an order and it hadn't come yet. Well, it came Saturday afternoon. And I did get some of the, um, the little samples of the Lolo bars, and they come in these little tiny um, little containers. They're just really tiny. And they are perfect for smelling and giving a quick test. So if you are on the fence about ordering them and you're not quite sure, do I want to spend $14 on a bar? Am I going to like the scent? Am I going to like how it feels on my skin? Buy one of the buy one of these little pouches. They're um, I don't know you get eight to ten maybe um, samples. I don't know. I I think I might have mixed them up somehow because this bag, which is the top sellers, only has eight in it. But I might have mixed them up because I got three different bags. There is um, top sellers earthy. Fruit and citrus, I think there's floral and also masculine. I didn't order the floral because a lot of floral fragrances like roses and um, lavender and stuff like that on my skin, I don't like. I, I The smell is too strong for me and it gives me a headache. So I try and stay away from those smells. So I didn't order those. 
um, that sample pack, and I also didn't order the masculine because don't really need masculine fragrances. But I do have a new favorite fragrance, which is Red Clover, and oh my goodness, I love it. In fact, I just placed another order last night before I got onto um, VKN, and I ordered two more bars of this, um, and another bar of um, Blackberry Sage, which is the one I got last time, which I love, and also my other new favorite, which is Pearl Knits. Pearl knits. So they're just wonderful. I love and these little these little samples, if you you buy them, you can still use them. You just pop the little piece out of there and you can use it for your hands, you know, to moisten up your hands, you know, try it to try it out. You're gonna love these bars. I mean, I if you don't love them when you buy them, call me up and we'll talk. <laughs> Because I don't know why, how you couldn't love them. They just make your your skin so soft and smooth. And they can they hold that moisture in. If you have dry skin and you try them and this does not work for you, you must be from a different planet. Because <laughs> I have extremely dry skin. And this these bars are amazing. They're absolutely amazing. So... I did the drawing again early this week because it's so much quicker. I can keep the computer over there and um, do the drawing, but I did leave it up on my phone. So you can see that it is number six for the um, travel pack. And the winner is, and again, I have no idea what this username is. It's um, I-N-G-A-B-E-A-N. -E it's, 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 it's got to be one of those things like where you put on a license plate and it's something funny. I have no idea what it is. Her name is Kirsten and she's from Spokane, Washington. Congratulations, you have won a travel pack. Get in contact with me once you've watched this episode, and I will let you know how to get that. And congratulations again. You are going to love it. The travel pack comes with um, a, a Lolo to go bar. I think some Lolo lips, which I also love. And I think I ordered some more of that, too, this week. Um, it comes with that. It comes with the Lolo lips. And I think a cuticle um, stick. I think that's what it comes with. It might come with one more thing, but I can't think of what it would be. I don't know. But anyway, you're the winner and you get the prize this week. So like I said, I did already post the thread for next week's drawing, which will be for a Lolo bar. Okie dokie. I am going to get into my finished objects. And I have two. I will start with my more basic socks, which were nearly done last week. I don't even know which one was the one that I was working on last week. Because I took the stitch markers out and I just put them on the blockers. And I think I've mentioned this before. I don't block my socks on blockers. I use them strictly for photo um, taking. And I haven't even soaked them yet. But here they are. And they are almost identical. The heels, I don't worry too much about the heels. The heels do are similar. Um, but they're not exact. I don't, again, I don't worry too much about the heels. I like just so that the tops match all the way up. And they pretty much do. So there you go. And one must be stretched a little bit more because they do look kind of funny, but they do match. 
they do end at the same point. They do start at the same point. They're from the same ball. I love them. I have not worn them yet. I wanted to take photos before I wore them. And I took photos, I think, Thursday night. Thursday night, I think. But they've been on the blockers since then, so I could show them to you. They are done. I like plain stockinette socks. Self-striping, variegated. They're just easy. Love them. So, this is another pair that's going in my sock drawer. So that's an, for my first finished object. And I did calculate my ball weight, but I didn't actually calculate the yardage. I wrote everything down and then forgot to calculate the yardage. But I will post that with the show notes this week because I didn't post it last week because I didn't calculate it last week at all. Um, but I will post it in the show notes this week with the updates. And you want to know what my finished object number two is? If you were on VKM with me last night, you already know what it is. And it is the Bacardi. It's done. Arms are done. Sewn in. Sleeves in. And everything. This is where I was a few weeks ago on the arms. If you remember correctly, I knit the body in the round and then steeped it. I did the same thing for the arms. I knit them in the round together, back to back, steek section on this side, steek section on this side, and then I steeped them. I actually steeped them Thursday night. I finished them on Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday. Two, I think it was Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday I finished them at work. And um, I was right here on the sleeve. Here's my stitch marker. And I was working from this end up. And I finished the sleeve. That was the stitch marker when it was both sleeves. And then here's the end of the sleeve. I steeked them Thursday night because I knew that I needed to steek them Thursday Yes, because I was going to take them to work with me on Friday and sew them in, sew the sleeves in on Friday. But I forgot the little clippy clips to sew them in, and I waited until last night. But I did sew it in, sew the arms in last night, and I'm very happy. And actually, when I was doing the when I was doing the steaks and I was doing the arms, I was thinking oh, these aren't going to line up with the patterning on the body. And last night, I wasn't even paying attention. I wasn't even caring one way or the other. And I just started sewing them in and what have you, and I'm just chatting on VKN and not really paying attention. And I look down and, oh, look, it does line up. Everything lines up, which is very cool. And uh, I love it. It is a... A slight bit snug uh, because if you remember I used the wrong needle size when I packed my project bag for this project I packed two size 4 needles instead of a size 4 and a size 5 so when I finished up the ribbing I was supposed to go from a size 4 to a size 5 for the body and I did switch needles but they were the same size. So when I was at uh, Knitting in the Mitten in November, I ended up having to rip back the whole sleeve only to find out that I ripped it back for no reason. And I was probably about in that spot. Um, I ripped it back for no reason because the entire sweater was knit on size fours. So I just knit the sleeves on size fours and it is a little snug. Had it been done on size fives, it probably would have fit me perfectly. Um, I have not blocked the sleeves yet because, like I said, I wanted to get it um, sewn together to be able to show you today. I will block it again, and I might be able to stretch it a little bit, but I just don't know. But if I lose the five, the 
10 to 15 pounds that I really would like to lose, I think it would be a perfect fit. So that's my goal. This sweater is going to be my motivation to drop those extra pounds that I've been wanting to lose. So it is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And I can wear it. It just, it's, the chest is really the, the main area that it's a little snug. I can button like the top button, maybe the top two buttons, but it's, it's snug. But it is completely done. All of the ends are woven in. The only thing that I didn't particularly like about sticking the sleeves the way that I did is that on the inside, you see here, this is where all the steak things are. And I don't know what I'm going to do about keeping that tucked in because those ends kind of come up a little bit. But it's not a huge deal. It definitely is not something that's going to keep me from doing this again, even if I can't figure out how to fix that. Because let me tell you, if I had done this flat all the ends that I would have had to weave in. Now, granted, the pattern calls for you to um, carry your yarn up the side. But really, I've heard people having, you know, not having trouble with that, but especially on the button band and having to encompass all of those extra threads in the button band, I just didn't want to deal with that. And my, my button band lays very flat and it's not bulky at all. So I'm very excited about actually being able to wear this sweater. Um, I'm hoping that the little bit of, of um, I did sew the, the steaks with my sewing machine. And uh, because I was in a rush, I only sewed one one line. However, when I did the body, I did do two. So I'm hoping that it doesn't become an issue. I do have enough yarn to do a whole nother sweater if I so desire. And uh, so I'm not really worried about it. I enjoyed the sweater. It took forever to do, but I enjoyed it. And if I had to knit another one, I would do it in a heartbeat. In fact, I have yarn. I don't know if you can see right here is yarn for a whole nother sweater in a different color. And I very likely will knit another one. So I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's beautiful. The colors are beautiful. I love it. And I'm hoping to wear it soon. And I, like I said, I will block it again and um, try and stretch out the sleeves. The sleeves are a little bit snug, um, but not too bad. And I think that they will block out a little bit when I um, block it again. And I didn't have that much yarn left over. I had the tiniest, tiny bit of pink. That much pink. But, um... So... That's how much yarn I had left over. The pink, the light pink and the light green are the ones that I used the most of. The other ones I had um, a considerable amount more of. Um, and that's with all the ripping back because when I ripped back the sleeves, I did throw away quite a bit of yarn because I had snipped the yarn and I didn't want to deal with all those little pieces. So even though I did that, I still had enough yarn to finish the sweater. And I love it. It's beautiful. And there was one mistake of occasion. And I didn't even notice it until I actually started looking at it. But I don't think anybody else is going to notice. <laughs> if you notice it from all the times that I hold it up, then you contact me. And let me know. But I seriously do not think anybody's going to see it. And I'm not even going to point it out. <laughs> so. I love it. Like I said. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm so glad it's done. But now I want to make another one. <laughs> it's crazy. 
So I might have another purple one in my future. But not, not, not now. I have too many other things to get done. So now that's three, three things that I finished in February. Three. Three finish it or frog it's in February. And there's been lots of people finishing and frogging things for February. It feels so good to just cleanse yourself, you know, either finish it or just say, I'm done. I'm not going to, I'm not going to finish this project and frog it. I want to say that there is like, I think there's 18 posts in the group right now. And mine's the first one. So, so 17, 17 projects have either been finished or frogged already for February. So that's awesome. And remember anything that you've started prior to November of last year will count for this challenge. So if you have a project that's been on the needles before, um, November 1st of last year, you can either finish it up this month or decide that you're done with it and frog it, making sure to post pictures. And um, you can be entered for a prize, which is yet to be determined. <laughs> so those are my finished objects. But I also have some whips. And we'll start with this one. This is my peony socks. And that's not the one I wanted to pull out. I did a couple rows on the first sock, but I did start my second sock, which was not started last week. I started it this week. I have been working on this project when I bounce at the office and when I watch podcasts. And uh, if you are interested to find out what I mean by bouncing... <laughs> You can check out the uh, pictures from Knittopia last year. Because <laughs> there was a couple of pictures of me bouncing and knitting or bouncing and spinning. So when I'm at the office and nobody else is around to look at how crazy I look when I'm bouncing and knitting, I knit on a sock, which is easy. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to look at it, but I haven't got that much done, which means I haven't done a whole lot of bouncing this week, which is not going to help if I'm trying to take off, you know, 10 to 15 pounds. But it is started. It's not a project that I am in a great hurry to finish because I really would like to get the other projects that have been on the needles much longer done. However, I did have, um, and I guess I'll pull this out. Last week I showed you, this is the first sock that I knit the heel on at Knitting Bowl. I've done, a, I did a couple rows on this just to work it up a little bit. I don't have a stitch marker in there to show you how far I've worked up, but I was probably about right there. So I've done maybe six rows on this sock. This sock is the one that has gotten more work this week. So this project is kind of do it when I bounce or when I feel like working on something other than the current project. And that's that. And again, I have all these numbers, but I didn't calculate it, so I'll put all that in the show notes. The, the project that got the most work this week, in addition to the Bacardi that's done, is the Citron. And I got a whole section completed. And I'm going to try and show this to you. A couple weeks ago, when was it that I last worked on this project? January 21st. Almost a month ago. I was right here in section 6. I have finished section 6 and I have started section 7. And I can show you section. Oh, wow. It was just the previous row. I just started the second ball. Just started the second ball last night. 
I, I was working on it yesterday at work, and it really te really is just the previous row. So, um, and let me tell you, these pucker rows that are double the number of stitches, they take forever. And then the other section, the plain stockinette where you have the decreased stitches, the, the, the flat sections, they go so much quicker. But I, let's see, I am, how many rows into this section? Oh yeah, that's that's one, two, three. I'm on row four. Yep. I'm on row four of this section. I have a total of six rows in the pucker section before I get to the decrease again. And this is the seventh section, and I had only planned on doing seven sections, and then my <clears throat> ruffle. I'm very tempted to do an eighth section because I don't want to have a lot of yarn left over. I don't know if I'm going to do an eighth section. I just I want to use up as much yarn as I as I can, but I'm afraid I'm going to run out of yarn number 1 and number 2 those rows are going to be extremely long if I do an eighth section and then do another, um, and then do the ruffle on top of that. So, I'm not sure yet. I have, what, 14 rows, 15 rows to go, um, before I have to make a decision. Actually, a little bit more than that because, like I said before, um, the first, you have to, your, the ruffle is just like the pucker section. So the first six rows of the pucker section, I can decide if I'm going to go ahead and do another stockinette section and then another ruffle or go from there. I have no clue how big this is going to be at this point. Um, I will have seven sections, which is two more than what the pattern calls for. But we'll wait and see. Um, I am enjoying the the feel of this yarn, this is uh, Malabrigo Baby Lace Merino. Ba Malabrigo, yeah, Baby baby Merino Lace, I think. However, I still think I want to make another Citron with um, Twisted Fiber Arts grady gradients. So, there it is. It's yummy, it's luscious, it's soft. It's all scrunched up on the needles. I'm hoping that I can get this finished this week because this this one and the Modified Lady Eleanor, which didn't work on at all this week, are the two other projects that I wanted to get done. I got the socks done. I got the Bacardi done. I got this, which is my Cassandra shawl, which I'm not sure if I like yet. Um, the fringe, to me, is a little much. I might try and trim the fringe down a little bit, maybe about make it two inches of fringe it might make it a little bit better and then I'll decide if I if I like it or not but if I can finish this I don't think I'm going to finish both projects but the citron is close enough for me to think that I could possibly finish it so this is what I'm going to be focusing on this week when I can pull myself away from the spinning wheel and when I have time to knit, because like I said, a lot of stuff is going to be happening this week with uh, the insulation and trying to get the house ready for that. So that is my Citron. And hopefully it will be done next week. Um, let's see. Spinning. I am still working on the Blue Moon Fiber Arts. Last week I had a bit of yarn left, or a bit of fiber left, from the second third, and I had not started the third third yet. I'm already halfway through the last third. This is all I have left, which is probably a little bit more than an ounce. I've been spinning like a mad woman this week. I finished the, um, the second third... 
I think it was Sunday, and immediately pulled out the last ball and started spinning it. If I spin any amount of time like I spun last week, this will be done and possibly, possibly plied by the weekend, by the time I record next week, but I probably won't have it plied. I probably, if I finish it, it'll probably be finished Friday night, and then it'll, I'll let it sit, and I'll probably ply it after I record on Saturday. But I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. It's the Grinchy colorway from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. It's in Polworth. And I'm really enjoying it. I do, um, oh, the first two, when I took the, when I took the braid, or it wasn't really a braid, it was just the, I don't know what you call it, a bump of fiber. <clears throat> and I split it in, th in thirds. And it pretty much split pretty equally into thirds. There was one that I had to take off a bit and put it on another one. And the first two sections I spun straight out where I didn't do any fractal. And then I thought, should I fractal this? And I did. I ended up taking the third half and I split that in half. So I don't know how it's going to turn out with, with how the colors are going to line up with one another. I think every single time I do something different with my fiber, as far as how I spin it, as far as if I spin it straight out or if I I split it in two or three or multiples or whatever. I do like the smaller bits versus a big wad of fiber when I'm spinning um, because my hands do get hot when I'm spinning and sometimes I grip the fiber a little bit too much and as the fiber is coming through my hands um, it kind of felts a little bit sometimes. I have been working very hard on trying not to grip my fiber and to allow it to just kind of flow um, out of my hands. Um, after watching Diane's tutorial, Diane from Knittable's tutorial on spinning, she just looks so relaxed when she's spinning. And I know that it's supposed to be just a relaxing movement. And I've been playing a lot with the... Um, I think it's scotch tension on my ladybug. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. The tension on my ladybug. On the bobbin. It's the bobbin tension. And I think all of this time I've had my tension so tight, which is why I've been hold, having a death grip on my fiber. And I got to the point where my tension on my bobbin was almost none. I... I made it none, and then I slowly, slowly, slowly t turned up the, the tension until I just had just enough tension so that it would pull the yarn onto the bobbin, but not enough that if I just held it, it wouldn't come out of my, it wouldn't pull from, pr pull from the fiber, which when you're spinning a very thin single, which is what I've been doing, you need, because you need it, you don't want it to pull it out of your hand. Otherwise, it's going to just pull right out. So, I have been enjoying this, and I'm looking forward to the next thing that's going to go on the ladybug when this is done. I haven't started any more fiber to spin on the spindle yet, but I am really, really, really tempted. Because I've missed not being able to spin at work. Um, since I finished up the... Yarn Hollow, BFL and Tussa Silk, which was on my spindle. I haven't started anything else on the spindle because it does take so long, but I have missed spinning on the spindle. So maybe this week I'll decide what I want to pull out of my stash to start spinning on my spindle. I'm not sure which spindle I'll use. I have... Um, a few to choose from. I have my Bosworth spindle. I have the one, the KY spindle that I spun the, um, I think the KY spindle is the one I spun the yarn hollow on. I also have my supported spindle that I still have not figured out how to use. Um, 
And I have a couple other ones that are just, I have a couple of shacked spindles. And I, I think I have another, another one that I got from um, the spinning loft, which is another lightweight spindle. So I might decide what fiber I want to spin on my, on my, um, on my spindle. I don't know yet. We'll see. But either way, there is going to be spinning on my sidekick. Um, last week I showed you the fiber that I got from Giggle Jelly, and it's very scary. I pulled it out and I wrapped it wrapped it into a ball today, um, and I'm pretty sure that I, I have two bumps of this. And I mentioned before that I was going to spin it up for my mother and then make her something. And I'm pretty sure because of how the the um, this is done, I don't have to split it like, like you would a bump of fiber that's dyed because all the colors are in there together. So my thought is, is that I will spin this... Um, straight out and then spin the other one straight out and then two ply them. But this is really scary because you see all of this fluff. This is all the tinsel. Um, is it tinsel? Yeah. Tuss of silk. Um, I was like, what am I going to do with this to keep it from getting all ratty? And I think I'm just going to have to keep it in this bag. And I don't know if I'm going to pull out a bit to spin or if I'm just going to keep it in the bag and spin it. I'm just not sure how I'm going to do it yet. If you've worked with this type of um, bump or bat or whatever, if you've worked with this kind of thing before, let me know how I'm supposed to do this. Um, I'm thinking that all I would have to do is just draft it out a bit and start spinning. And it's, oh, so, so luscious. I just love it. So this is what I'm going to put on my, um, my sidekick soon. Very excited about it. And then, like I said, I'm going to spin it up. This is the little sample. That's not as intimidating. <laughs> but that big piece is very intimidating. So... I'll probably start with this little piece because I did spin up some of this in, a, in that blue from before. But this is on, going on the sidekick soon. I don't know if I'll start it this week or not. Um, it is so soft and luscious. It's um, merino wool, 75% merino wool, 25% tussa silk, and it's just luscious. And I think it's going to produce a gorgeous fiber. It's going to be two-ply. And I'm hoping to do maybe some socks and a shawl for my mom. So that's my spinning this week. I did see that um, Wendy and Sheila of the Knit One Heart 2 podcast did a darning video. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. But I possibly might use this pair of socks to experiment with once I watch their tutorial. Um, I made these socks a few years ago and you see what I've got there? I think it was a weak spot in the yarn because how do you get a hole in the side of your sock? Now if it was a hole in my heel or on my foot the heels and foot, perfectly fine. I think it was a, a weak spot in the yarn, and somehow it came out. It broke. And they've been sitting languishing in my bin. This, the other sock is perfectly fine. They've been languishing in my bin because I didn't want to frog them. I'm not going to rip them out and re-knit them, but I possibly would consider trying a darning technique or to see what other 
kind of options they give you if you have socks that have a hole in them. So I'm going to watch that video hopefully this weekend and possibly decide if I'm going to attempt to fix these socks or finally say bye-bye and put them in the trash. I might even just try and fix them and send them off to Goodwill just so that they don't fall apart because wouldn't it be nice if somebody who needed socks had a nice pair of wool socks to wear? They are super washed, so I don't think it would be a problem as far as that goes, but I don't know. Now that I'm looking at them, it looks like there's another spot down here. Nope, that's just part of the pattern. Those are eyelets. So yeah, so I'll decide this week if I'm going to attempt that repair. Okay, March Madness. Um, I have in the thread where you can sign up for March Madness. Sorry for the crinkling. Um, you have until today to sign up. So hopefully I can get this posted quickly so that if you haven't signed up, you have time to sign up. Um, and I'm hoping to have all of the yarns chosen by tomorrow. I think I have about 14 or 15 more people to choose. I've been trying to do them um, a little bit at a time, and it is taking a little bit more time than I expected um, because I'm getting wrapped up in all the lovely sash and goodness. And then I'm clicking links and not buying anything. I, I've been good, but still clicking links and doing other stuff. So I will have all the yarn chosen by tomorrow. And, um, yeah, so that it is, it's going to be fun. This is the yarn that was chosen for me. This is one of the newer skeins that I've purchased. This is the Lorna's Laces Soulmate. And as much as I don't want to be boring, I'm thinking that these are going to be plain stockinette socks. And... The only reason is, is because I haven't knit with this soulmate yet, and I so badly want to make a pair of socks with this stuff. So, they're definitely going to be socks. I might consider doing a stitch pattern on the leg, but I haven't decided that yet either. Um, I know that Lala from the Knit Girls, Laura, she was doing a sock with a small cable up the side, up the foot, and then up the leg. Just a little bit of detail. Um, I don't think she ever published that pattern, but I think that um, I'm, I could possibly do something simple like that. But it's definitely going to be something simple where I don't have to think about it too much because... I only have one pair of socks on the needles right now. And I definitely want socks out of this stuff. So we'll see what I'm going to do. I'm not going to ball it up or do anything with it until March 1st. But it's in the back of my mind and I'm kind of churning some ideas on it. So that's that. March Madness that will start uh, March 1st. You have to sign up by today, um, February 18th, so that I can pick your yarn for you, so that you have time to pick your pattern, so that you can get it cast on by March 1st, or on March 1st. And um, speaking of Lala, she has been talking about some yarn from Ladybug Fiber Company, and I decided that I needed to try it. If she was loving it so much, I needed to give it a shot. And there we go. There's the card. Ladybug Fiber Company. And I purchased the Superwash Merino Sock. And it's 100% Superwash. It's 415 yards. And it's 7 to 9 stitches on US 0 to 2. And there it is. There's the colorway. It is gorgeous. Mostly green with the splash of the gold and of the purple. And it's great. 
this yarn reminds me a little bit of a Volmiza. Yeah, it has kind of that cottony feel, I think, because it's got so many um, plies. I don't know how many plies it has, but it has a lot. And it does remind me of Volmiza when I first touched it. I'm not sure how I'm going to like it, but if it is anything like Volmiza, I'm sure that I will love it. I'm trying to see how many plies it is. It's like five or six plies. It's a lot. But I love the colorway. It's absolutely gorgeous. Nice and rich and very nice. So this will definitely become socks at some point, I think. I just don't know when. One more in Abilene because I finally did get my, sorry for the crinkle, I finally did get my Sundara order. I placed this order, oh, I don't know, I think in November or early December. This is the Sport Merino 2, and this is the colorway um, Arabian Nights. And to be completely honest with you, it's a lot darker than I expected it to be. I'm hoping that when it knits up, it's, it lightens up a bit. But it's, it's a lot darker than I expected it to be. I think it's going to be gorgeous. But I wasn't expecting it to be this dark. I don't know why I was expecting it to be lighter. I think I might have seen it maybe in a different base. And um, that base didn't take the color as, as much. But there it is. It's a very dark. Um, it is kind of variegated with kind of browns or golds and purples. And uh, looks like some greenish. But it's it maybe it's a... Um, an overwash of the black. I'm not sure how, how something like this gets dyed, but it's, it is gorgeous. And the camera is not doing it justice at all. Let me see if I can hold it. That you can get a, a little bit better of an image of it. Um, but it is absolutely gorgeous. And um, this is going to be a sweater at some point. I did order six skeins. And the yardage on it is 338 yards. Um, six to five to six stitches per inch on a three to five so it is definitely going to be a sweater at some point i just don't know when because i'm not casting on any new projects until the other projects are done and i have been finished with march madness and because march madness is the march madness challenge plus i'm getting all of my knitting for hire done in march every last bit of it I think I have like six projects that need to get done. And I would like to get them all done and shipped before Knittopia. So, there it is. So that's that. Um, I did want to do one quick um, segment on the charity. And I'm not going to really speak a lot about the charity. Because if you are not my mother or not my a good friend of mine who watches my podcast only because it's me watching it or me doing it. Um, you probably watch plenty of other podcasts that say, give information about all of these charities and fundraising efforts. I will have the links in the show notes so you can find information easily if you so choose. But um, the Mommy Needs Yarn, Erin, from Mommy Needs Yarn, she is doing the Autism Speaks uh, fundraiser. She has, there's a link in the show notes for that. Um, Melia Bella, Melissa from the His and Hers podcast, she's doing the Susan G. Komen Walk. Sarah Rain Lover from the Rain Lover Knits podcast, she's doing the Avon Walk. Um, Sadie from the Yarnover podcast, she's doing the Snuggle Drive, which is going to be finishing up here at the end of February. And then there's also Yen for Yarn. All of those links will be in the show notes if you uh, want to help those causes out. And um, I think that's about it for this week. I am looking forward to having time to knit this week. I'm just nervous that there's going to be so much with the insulation that my knitting time is going to be limited. So 
If you are watching on iTunes and you so desire to uh, go and leave a comment, first go over and check out um, Fiberista Files and Heather and check out the rules for leaving comments on iTunes, which I watched her episode this morning from last week and she was totally hilarious and I just busted out laughing when she corrected all of the mistakes. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious as an English teacher, which she is. I just, I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> and um, so yeah, she has a list of rules for leaving comments on uh, iTunes. So go check out her show. She's just absolutely hilarious. And uh, yeah, so leave a, a star rating or a comment if you so desire for this podcast or any of your podcasts. And uh, I hope your knitting blooms this week. Talk to you later. Bye for now.